Okay. Now, I want you all to know that you did a really shitty thing yesterday. A really shitty thing. <laughs> the role of the gym teacher in Stephen King's Carrie is a great example of how a supporting character can add a lot to the story. Mr. Jordan! In the book, Rita Desjardin is a young teacher on her first job, and it's in her class that the popular girls start attacking Carrie over her first period. <laughs> The incident awakens a protective streak in her, and she's compelled to fight for Carrie when no one else will. While you're running, I'd like for you to think long and hard about what it would be like to be Carrie White. She disciplines the girls for their behavior and gets Chris suspended. Punishment for skipping detention is three-day suspension and refusal of your prom tickets. At the prom, she's nice to Carrie and tries to help her after the blood is poured, although it's hinted she laughed at first as well. She survives the massacre, but ends up resigning from the school in guilt over not being able to help Carrie more. Did any of you ever stop to think that Carrie White has feelings? Do any of you ever stop to think? In the 1976 film, she's played by Betty Buckley and renamed Miss Collins for some reason. Thought the Stephen King adaptations got rid of the Irish characters. This version is mostly the same as the book, although she's a little softer. Hey Carrie, what's the matter? They expand on the protective streak, and add in scenes where she gives Carrie a little pep talk about the prom, really establishing a connection between them that you don't necessarily get in the book. Look at your hair. It's beautiful hair. You could just put it up a little, maybe add a little curl. I used to be against Betty Buckley's performance, mostly because I'd like me the hard ass from the book, but nowadays I can finally get it. You look so pretty. You too, you look beautiful. And there are lots of nice moments I can really appreciate. You'll never forget it. I like I will. She's a much more empathic character than the book, and in some scenes that really works. It was magic. Is it like that for you? I dare you not to feel that warm and fuzzy feeling at this scene. Have a lovely time, okay? And you do. <laughs> Betty Buckley also says that she played Miss Collins as a lesbian, which is an interesting choice, but this being 1976 doesn't really come up that much. Now that's a pretty girl. Look at her eyes! I'm surprised the 2013 version didn't expand on that idea, paralleling one outcast to another. This film is notable for having a certain action happening towards Chris. <gasps> In the book she was just pushed against a locker, and the scene itself is a little uncomfortable to watch. Especially if you learn that Nancy Allen got slapped about 30 times because she wasn't giving the right reaction and Betty Buckley was hitting her for real. Which brings us to you. Miss Collins gets a more active part in the third act as well, thanks to an additional subplot. Well, you know, I can make sure that you don't hurt Carrie White anymore. She becomes suspicious of Sue's motives in getting Tommy to take Carrie to the prom, culminating in her thinking Sue is causing trouble, and throwing her out before she can stop the blood being poured. Oh, and guess what happens at the prom scene? <laughs> Yep, didn't see that coming. It works for the horror of the moment to have a major character get killed off in the massacre as well, especially since the film doesn't really touch on how the town is changed by the events. But although Betty Buckley dies here, this was not the last time she starred in a Carrie adaptation. Let the shadows descend like a night. Yeah, and she was one of the few things people liked about the original Broadway run. Keep those bodies, keep those bodies, keep those bodies. Moving on. And she shouldn't have skipped attention. I was talking to you, Miss Desjardins. When I am, you'll know because I'll be looking at you. 2002 gives the character back her original name, where she's now played by Rena Sofa. How about today we skip softball? Yeah. And make boutonnieres for your prom dates instead. Hmm? I'm smiling even as I say that name because... We can make them out of these. <laughs> Yeah, this is the best, Mr. Jardin. We can all go home. You can't hit us! I barely touched you. So yeah, Rena Sofa is fantastic, and I think FX should just hire her to do the role again, because no one can top that. Open your mouth one more time, and I'll plug you up. Fanboying aside, this Mr. Jardin is less nurturing than Miss Collins, and leans closer to the stern, fiery presence she was in the book. If you show Carrie anything less than the time of her life, I'll see to it personally. You're expelled. And the film actually expands on that as well. Give me the chair! Give me the chair! 
In the book, she's one of the survivors, yes, and she escapes the prom by getting out through the fire doors before Carrie locks them. That's not very exciting on film, so here... Norma! Look at me! You come with me, okay? Everybody come with me! She survives this time and gets an interview showing just how the incident has changed her. What happened wasn't natural. In the prom scene, there are a couple of moments where she seems to guess that Carrie is doing everything. Carrie! And with some other lines, suggests that she may have played a role in the TV series as well. Two weeks ago, I saw a steel desk move across the floor without anyone touching it. Five inches. I measured. Carrie White was in the room when it happened. That could have provided some interesting material, with the teacher that showed Carrie kindness and sympathy having to confront the fact that she was partly responsible for most of her students being murdered. I don't need you to tell me how many people died. Half of them were kids I saw every day. And what she could do if she discovers that Carrie is alive and in hiding. I didn't see anything. But if wishes were fishes... You're out of prom and you're out of my class, now! No. No? In the 2013 film, she still missed Des Jardin, and now played by Dark Horse Judy Greer. Are you gonna get him a boot in the air? Or are you just gonna pin a bloody tampon to his lapel? I so don't need to hear this. You're not going anywhere. An unconventional choice, sure, but at least it's a change from her niche's concerned, insignificant mother in blockbusters. If this movie had been made two years later, she'd probably be playing Mrs. Snell. I am so sorry that I that I slapped you. I should have handled it better. Her Mr. Jardin is a merger between Betty Buckley's friendly nurturing presence and Rena Sofa's powerful hard ass, with some more comedic touches in there. I think we should just look at her phone, and if it's not there, I owe you a huge apology, and she should be allowed to go to prom. Overall, the movie doesn't really cover any new ground with her apart from Carrie going out of her way to spare her during the massacre. Oh. But you could interpret this as a cruel mercy too, forcing her to watch the students being electrocuted while she's powerless to help. She survives, but we never get an insight into what effect the incident has on her. So, despite a talented actress in the role, she feels like a missed opportunity. Do you want some punch? I heard Greg and Harry spiked it. Really? Mr. Jardin is probably my favourite out of the supporting characters in Carrie, as the most prominent adult in the story who's not insane. I liked you. I liked you. If there's anything to note about how the adaptations present her, it's that the softer and more nurturing portrayal of Betty Buckley's in the 1976 film is what seems to have endured. The musical and 2013 remake draw more from that than the book's angrier and aloof description. And Carrie, you're dismissed from gym for a week. Just take study hall instead, okay? But among the fans, it seems to be a different story as to who the favourite really is. I got mine when I was ten. Ten? Oh, I was wearing these white pants. Oh my god, I was mortified. I 